okay, now still, let's come back to this directionality that I've posed, which is the effects of sarcopenic obesity on insulin resistance. So with the loss of muscle mass comes the loss of, of the main insulin responsive glucose handling tissue. With the obesity is the hypertrophic fat cell and how the hypertrophic fat cell not only becomes insulin resistant to check its own growth or to slow down its own growth, uh, but also it becomes pro-inflammatory. And I already mentioned the influence of the inflammatory cytokines on um, on muscle earlier. So that is once again, directly affecting the muscle, but also with the sarcopenic obesity, the loss of the muscle and the expansion of the fat cells, we have a pretty relevant and profound change in uh, um, hormones. Um, muscle, for example, releases hormones that help keep body fat in check, like a hormone called FGF21 or hormone, a hormone called irisin. Both of those are muscle derived hormones called myokines that act to increase fat burning. At the same time, there are hormones from the small healthy fat cells like adiponectin that improve insulin sensitivity throughout the body. But as the fat cell gets bigger and bigger, adiponectin production goes ever further down. So collectively, the sarcopenic obesity ends up shifting uh, hormone production in such a way to further promote ever greater insulin resistance. All right. Now, so what? about sarcopenic obesity. Well, I don't have to explain to you the consequences. They're pretty obvious now. Once you appreciate that sarcopenic obesity is causing insulin resistance or contributing to it, then we quickly lead, we quickly get to all of these plagues of prosperity that I've talked about before. And indeed why I wrote my initial book, Why We Get Sick. Heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, fatty liver disease, infertility, hypertension, all of those and many, many more are directly impacted by insulin resistance. Um, also, of course, we have the simple reality that the fatter we get and the weaker we get, the more likely we are to have a vastly reduced quality of life. Mobility drops that results in an overall reduced quality of life and a greater economic burden on the individual or taxpayers at a, at a country or societal level. Um, but the, the quality of life, I would argue, is the most relevant. A person's just going to be miserable because they have a harder time just living life now. Okay, now. Is there any good news here? Of course, there always is when it comes to metabolism because there's always something that can be done. And it's not a drug. It's not going to be some clever new mix of some pharmacological cocktail. It's going to be what are you putting in your mouth and what are you doing with your time? So how, but the question is not so obvious because if we follow the traditional advice of eat less, exercise more, we're simply going to be promoting a caloric deficit. And as I have stated before in previous episodes, the further we push ourselves into a deliberate caloric deficit, the hungrier we get. And hunger always wins. So how can we starve the fat while feeding the muscle? Well, to do so, we cannot have this strategy starting or focused on cutting calories. If we just focus on cutting calories, we end up with a result that's going to be just like what happens on people with Ozempic and Magovi. When people are taking these GLP-1 medications, they stop eating. And up to 40% of the weight that they lose is coming from their lean mass. Well, if you are already sarcopenic and obese, sure, you want to lose the fat mass. You don't have lean mass to spare. So that would be catastrophic. So we cannot focus on just stopping eating. We need to focus on reducing insulin. When we reduce insulin, but let the calories be what they will, control carbohydrates, prioritize protein, don't fear fat. Those are the three pillars of reducing insulin and losing weight. When insulin comes down, metabolic rate goes up. Remember now, I'm not saying calories don't matter. Don't ever think I'm saying that. I'm just saying that if you have these two variables to mess around with, insulin and calories, don't worry about the calories. They're going to take care of themselves in particular for two reasons. One, as insulin goes down, metabolic rate goes up by several hundred calories per day. David Ludwig has found this. There's multiple papers promoted, uh, published on this. Um, part of the mechanism also is going to be the production of ketones. Um, not only do ketones result in also contribute to the elevated metabolic rate by increasing a phenomenon referred to as mitochondrial uncoupling, Look at the link in the show notes for a paper from my own lab. We've published several papers on this phenomenon. So ketones increase metabolic rate by just telling the body to waste energy. But even the ketones themselves become wasted energy. As you are breathing out the ketones or urinating out the ketones, each ketone has a caloric value roughly comparable to glucose. And think about it. Every ketone that you're dumping from your body is calories that didn't need to be stored, that didn't need to be burned through exercise. You're just wasting them. 